The Frank Clark 3 brush set contains a one and a half inch goat hair brush, a three quarter inch goat hair brush and a number three rigger brush. These brushes are essential for the Frank Clark unique have some more fun system. To order, call the telephone number on screen for your area and get painting now. Well, we've just about arrived to where we're going and the captain has told me this is Fort Jefferson. We're about 75 miles from Key West. So when we land, I'll tell you more. Hello, it's Frank again, out in which you all do away. Imagination is fun, when it's free to run. Come on, we paint this a brand new day. Simply paint this a brand today. Welcome everyone once again to Simply Painting. I'm Frank Clark and this is the first in our new series. Now this time we're starting in America. And the reason is I got an opportunity to come to a little golf tournament they hold in Augusta, Georgia. <laughs> yes, exactly. Anyway, let's head into the fort and let's have a look around. Well, here we are. We're right in the center of the old fort. Now let me just tell you a little bit about it. First of all, it was built originally as a fort and then became a prison. But another point of interest, it's built in brick and they used almost 40 million bricks to build this place. But of course there's no bricks lying around here because it was a little sandbank 70 miles from the nearest land. So they had to take all the bricks and cement and everything else and bring them all the way from New York. My goodness me. But what we're going to do is we're going to have a little closer look at some of the nicer parts and not so nice parts of this fort. So let's, let's go. Here we are inside the fortress and this is one of the not so nice places. This is the cell where they kept Dr. Samuel A. Mudd. Now, who was he? Well, he was the man who was accused of being an accomplice in the murder of Abraham Lincoln. And he was sent off here for the rest of his life, so to speak. However, they had dreadful yellow fever and many other diseases here because there was no water on the island. They had to bring it in. Sometimes it got contaminated. And he helped everybody, even though he was a prisoner. He helped the guards, the lot. And because of that, he was pardoned. And he left here, as we're now going to do. Because what we're going to do is we're going to pop outside now and we're going to find something for us all to paint. So let's go. Well, now, there's a definite possibility. Well, we've just stepped outside the fort. That poor man, imagine he was in there, and look what's outside, and look what's behind me. Isn't that fantastic? There's nothing but beautiful scenery around here. We're going to pick something, I'm going to make a quick sketch, and then it's back to the studio, and together we're going to paint it. So, let's get going. Hello there. Well, just putting a wee mark on my page. That uh, Fort Jefferson was something, wasn't it? Fantastic place. Anyway, we'll tell you more about it as we go along. Uh, first of all, let's tell you about the materials we're going to need. And this time we've got five colours, and they are lemon yellow, cobalt blue, light red, burnt umber, and raw sienna. We have our three brushes, which is our large goat hair, which is one and a half inch. We have the small goat hair, which is three quarter inch, and we have the rigger. We have some water, we have some cloths to control the water on our brush. We have a tray, which we call our palette, with our paint out on. And last of all, we have a piece of watercolour paper which measures 14 by 10, and it is longwise, therefore we're painting in landscape. This paper, by the way, is 140 pounds. That's the thickness. So without further ado, let's get at it. And what I was doing when you dropped in on me there was I was just putting a little mark up the page, and on both sides the same height up about about four, three inches I think it is let's just check it and see it's four inches four inches yeah that's our horizon line so we're going to draw the horizon line 
right across like that and we go horizon, sky, middle and foreground or have some more fun. Remember that? Of course you do. Right, next thing is we're going to put the sky in. Now this time we're going to do a very quick sky because these skies down in the Florida Keys are lovely and blue with little fluffy white clouds. So we're going to just take some cobalt blue. Watch this now. If this ain't easy, I don't know what is. We're just taking some cobalt blue and we're going to start at the top of the page and we're going to draw it across like that. Look back and forward till we get a nice, even colour. Now we have to put in some more paint because the top of this will be quite, quite strong. And as we go down the page, it'll get a little lighter. That's called a graded wash. Did you ever hear that now? What it means is, of course, that it's lighter at the bottom than it is at the top. And the only way you can get that is you put more water in the bottom of them and less paint. Now back and forward a few times like that, you can probably see little rings appearing on the thing and disappearing. They were my fingers where I stuck them on the page. See those things there? They'll go away though. In fact, I once uh, complained to a manufacturer <laughs> of watercolour paper that there was these rings appearing and they wrote back to me very nicely and said, Dear Frank, keep your hands off the page and it'll be all right. That's true, actually. Now, there we are. Now we need a fluffy cloud brush. Well, on my way here, I picked this up in a little room. You all know what I'm talking about. And now, look, it just roll up the paper and here and there, just lift it out. You'll see that what I've done is I've transferred the paint onto the tissue paper. Now, we, want, we put another one here. Look, let's put another one, smaller one down here, little fluffy clouds. And maybe just a little bit more. Don't overdo, don't go mad on this. Now, now I, I showed this to somebody once and I looked around. There they were dabbing away like a mad person. That's enough. That's enough fluffy clouds. Put that away now. Isn't that easy? Now, we let's dry it. There we are, give it a good dry. Now this place, this whole area here, this little island, if you like, of sand, was called the Dry Tortugas. And that means turtles and dry. So all they had was turtles, there was no water on it. And what they used to do years ago was, before there was a fort there at all, the ships used to stop there and grab all the turtles and have turtle eggs and turtle soup and things like that. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, and then they decided to build this great big fort, as I told you which I thought was incredible. 40 million bricks, can you imagine that? Anyway, just here on the horizon, remember there was a kind of a, there was an island just the other side of, and on it there was all kinds of exotic birds and everything, it was just an incredible place. Pelicans, that's what they were, they used to dive into the sea. If you ever get a chance to go there, it, it's just fantastic. Now I'm just gonna put, represent that island. Now we keep it a little bit, the colors, in Key West are a lot more vivid than I would normally paint. You know, when I paint Connemara in Ireland and places like that, there's usually mist in that and the bog scenes, and as they say. There's none of that here, of course. It's dead, dead bright, yeah. Now we also, there was on that little, the other little patch of sand, another small island it was, just beside the main one, there was also a few little bushes and things. I like that, look. And the same there. That's all, don't make, a, don't make a meal of it, as they say. And then underneath that, we're just gonna run a little bit of brown along, just to, sh just to show you the break between the sand and the thing, and there it is, that's all. Now that's the little island just off the shore, or off the shore of the main island, if you like. Now, let us just get a little drier here. Where is that? That's our little, I forget what I was doing there. Quick dry. Now we just run some sand on, on that island because that was plenty of sand on it, I can tell you. The whole place is sand. I've just taken some of the raw sienna, see it there? 
And then right along underneath there, I'm just going to put a little sandbank. That's all. Simple as that. And now underneath that sandbank, I'm going to run some C. Now, I don't want a lot of C this time, but I do want it nice and vibrant and a greeny colour. Because it was, wasn't it? Now, let's check this on our little tester. That's a little bit... I think that's a little bit too... Too greeny. Ah, that's better now. Take your time with mixing this stuff. It's better... Better spend your time here mixing. That's better, isn't it? Now, I'm going to put a very thin line of C. With the, with, this is with the baby goat hair. See that? And then across like that. Now, underneath that, I'm going to put some almost pure lemon yellow. Watch this now. That's to change the colour of the sea there, as it comes up on the shore, you see. Now, that looks nice, doesn't it? It's that beautiful, bright colours. And a quick dry. Quick dry. Quick draw McGraw, that's me. It's actually just a repeat of the sky, really, isn't it? With a little bit of the yellow in it. And you get that nice colour. So you see, with the same colours, you can paint all different climatic differences and bright skies and dark skies. You don't need to go off looking for new tubes of paint. In fact, uh, one of the things was said to me when we went there, my, my director, he said, Frank, you've only got the eight tubes. You'll need some new ones for, to paint uh, this kind of scene. I said, not at all. One, the one does, absolutely. So no matter where you are, those eight tubes will do you fine. Now I'm going to put some sand in. He's a conscientious lad, you know. I wish the gentleman who does the painting in my studio... You know, since we were here last, I asked him to change the colour of the walls, because a lot of people wrote in and said they're awful. I went to Steve the Builder. You met him before. I talked about him before. Yeah, well, Steve the Builder was supposed to come back and paint my walls. Would you believe? <laughs> Not at all. He's away gallivanting. He's a yachtsman, you see. Never can get him. Oh, these builders got so much money, these guys, you see. Little jobs like mine don't make much to them. Oh, well. Anyway, we're now, uh, you see we put the sand in. One swipe, as I was talking to you there. Let's give it a dry. Ah, there you go. Now, you see, I left a little bit of white there. You see that? Well, that kind of represents the, the little waves coming in onto the beach and that sort of thing. Now, next, we've got to look at... I'm going to take a pencil and do a little bit of sketching for you because sticking out here somewhere... Remember, we had that little kind of a, a hut and a, a beach scene. Remember that? And there was little legs keeping it. There was one there and there was one there and there was one there. We can, these are just very roughly now. Now, the, the little hut itself was about here somewhere, and it goes to about there. That's a square, that, and we put the roof on it. Remember the letter V upside down? There we are, look. And this goes like that. There's more, more of these sticks holding it up, and, of course, it comes down like that. And we put another set of sticks there. Now, that's about it. Next move is we're going to draw that thing in. Now, we may have to come up a little bit with those because... We probably need to put some rails on there so the children won't fall off. Now, OK, so next move now is just to fill that in. And we're going to use some of the light red this time and a little bit of the blue. We make a nice darkish colour with that. Nice whiny colour. We'll see how that looks now. Starting with the roof, always work downwards. Remember that? I think I told you that because if you work downwards, you won't get your arm in the paint. It's as simple as that. So we build from the roof down. I like my pal Steve the Builder, isn't that right? Yeah. Who doesn't build at all. <laughs> doesn't even turn up. Anyway, he will by next year, don't worry. By the next time, by our next series, <laughs> I'm sure. And, and this, of course, is the first of the new ones, so... He's got a... Now, you see, the roof is going on. Now, I'm going to get the 
the small goat hair. I'm going to change the colouring slightly now and use some of the burnt umber. It's a kind of darkish wood in this. Everything, of course, on the keys is, is, is wood and that type of thing because they didn't have very much natural material, except for the bricks in that uh, Fort Jefferson, which I thought was rather interesting. 40 million of them, yeah. 40 million bricks. And you know the funny thing was, you know all those cannons? They had, a, they had 400 cannons, 100 on each side. There's four sides to the thing, yes. The only tiny snag is, and this is perfectly true, if the day had ever come when they had fired those cannons, they could, they could actually train 100 cannons in any one direction. If they'd fired them, the whole thing would have fallen down a heap. <laughs> because the bricks were only held together with kind of sand and stuff. And there was, so there would have been an enormous crash and not a single solitary wall would have been standing. That wouldn't have been so nice, would it? Now you see I'm putting down these, these little poles. These are holding up the thing, aren't they? I'm going to put a few more there because this is a fairly ends. And then on this side here. And we put a top deck on this in a minute. See, it's coming along nicely now, isn't it? Yeah. Now the back of it, and it's pretty dark in the back, so we take blue and brown and we make up a dark colour. Yeah, that is an interesting one, isn't it? They never actually fired a cannon, but, um, and it was the Union side, it wasn't the Confederacy, it was the Union side that owned Fort Jefferson, you see. And they were there one day, and a rebel, as we call it, or, yes, I suppose you could call it, boat arrived, gunboat, into the harbour, and the captain sent word up to the fort that he wanted them all to surrender. And the commander of the fort sent word back down to him. He said, surrender me, I. If you don't get out of there in 10 minutes, we'll blow you out of the water. And the commander of the boat, or the captain of the boat, took one look at the place and he thought, this fellow could be serious, so I better not go near him. So he said, OK, sorry, 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 and they disappeared over the horizon. The only snag was at that stage they had neither guns nor gunpowder there at all, and it was called a bluff. He bluffed them. Isn't that a good one? Yeah, I'm going out there. That's the truth, yes. Now we're going to put a little window in here because it's beginning to look a little... Uh, a little lonely there. You want to be able to look out of this thing. Now we're very nearly completed that. You see, we're working all the time from the back forward. Now I'm going to put a little bit of... Obviously underneath there, there's a shadow. And this is where you bring the thing to life. Do you see that? See, once you put the shadow in, the whole thing makes sense, doesn't it? Except maybe we're a leg or two short. So we think for the sake of keeping this thing up, we'll put another, maybe just one more leg and another leg there. How about that? It looks strong enough now, it does, of course. Now we're again working back to front, remember that? Starting at the back and working forward. Once again, we got to put the old dryer to work here. There we go. You can actually, uh, you can actually camp on that oil. You can stay on it, which I thought was a lovely idea. I'm definitely going back there. I'm definitely going back. Yes, I am. We're going to, we're going to go down there for a holiday maybe next year. I got Peggy ready. She's got the golf clubs all packed up now. She's off playing golf again today. She's a wonderful life, isn't she? Ah, she might as well. She wasn't well for a while last year, so we, we have to give her a bit of. Freedom now, he says. But she likes golf, plays well too. Now I'm just darkening in the shadow there just to kind of show it off a bit better. That's it. Let's dry that and now we're going to start on the old palm trees. I had to kind of uh, save them up to last because it's kind of the best wine to last, isn't it? Right, let's look and see now where we're going to put these palm trees now. We could have, if we had have had a lot of time, as he said, we could have drawn in the palm trees and masked them, put the masking fluid on them. And it would have meant then that we, we would have had nice white palm trees. But we don't have the time 
and this is you the inclination to do that. So we're going to put the palm trees in where we think they would be. Now, they were fairly bendy ones. You know what I mean by that? Fairly bendy. Look, they went like that a bit. Now, I'm going to let that dry a little bit. And now, as it is, I'm going to take this knife, see this thing here, and I'm going to, it's just, you can use an ordinary knife for doing it, and just scrape it down along like that, look. That's something I haven't shown you before. <laughs> and we just scrape it out a bit. So rather than, in other words, we've cheated, yes. We didn't have, I think we come down, down a bit more. We didn't have a, the masking fluid on, but we can cut, take it back out like that with a knife, provided you do it fairly quickly. I'm just going to extend that palm tree a little bit down here because it was a bit short in the butt, he says. That's better. Now I'll give it one more. Look, see, this is, a, this is one of those knives that you'd... See, you can just scrape it out like that. Not handy. Now let's look at the second palm tree. We want to make a kind of a nice job of it, so why don't we bring it here somewhere? A bigger one. Hmm. We'll do a bit of scraping on it when we're finished as well. I'll be going mad now, let's see now. Don't go mad with this now when you start this scraping business. I know you have shown it to you. I often think it, it can be a mistake showing people this because they'll scrape everything to death. Don't do that. Look, just raise the thing on it, put it and just drag it down like that. You can do, if you don't have one of these little hilty kind of knives, an ordinary knife, any a credit card, in fact, will do fine. So when you, the time comes for your credit card is no use anymore, get your old credit card and turn it into your scraper. Now we're going to make up some palm leaves. Now what I want you to look at is this. The palm leaves start, as everything else does in watercolour painting, light to dark. See that? I think we used a small one. Let's see, we might get... It's a bit big. We'll make bigger palm. Da, da, da. The brush got to be pretty dry now because you want to drag it on. You see the way you can actually see the leaves? Now, they, they kind of go that way, don't they? Palm tree leaves, yeah. And then there's another one goes up like that. And another one goes up straight up in the air. See that? And then the other one. On the other side, okay. And the same thing there, and up there. Now, if you want to do this an easier way, you could actually draw in the leaves first. Do you know what I mean by that? Use the small brush. Now we've got to get some darker color here, because we've got to go over these now. We'll put in our, ah, there we are. Won't go much more than this now, we've enough done. We're getting tight on time, as they say, anyway. Now, next. Now, we did have some nice shadow colour mixed up, so we better do that. And, again, which way was the light coming? It was coming this way, wasn't it? So we've got to put our palm trees up like that, and they go up like that, you see? And then we got to, oh, there was coconuts on them. Hmm, so well, let's put some coconuts on the palm trees. They're just little dots of burnt umber. You know, you want to be careful standing under some of these palm trees that hit on top of the head before you know where you were. And now I'm just outlining, look, see? I see, pucks of time, haven't we? Uh. Now, I think uh, we're kind of short of one leaf there. It's looking a bit scraggy, this one. So let's go up a bit that way. I think that's better now. Now, put in this bit of a end piece on that. Now we need to just uh, down the bottom here, I'm going to put some different colored sand. Do you know? Otherwise, it looks very plain looking. 
And we've got a couple of things more to do. I rather enjoy these. They're very easy, these uh, little laddie doos. A little bird. And then we've got to sign it. Find something for signing it, he says it'll be fine. Uh, where are we? Ah, there we are. And over here we sign it. And then we take our little mount. Because when we get to this stage, that's it. We're, we're just about finished. We could put some carrots, but we won't bother this time. We're going to stick the mount on like that. And then we sit back and admire it. And we say to you from Frank Clark, once again, try this out. And you too can have some more fun simply painting. Frank Clark's Simply Painting box set contains Frank's unique goat hair brush set, eight tubes of artist quality watercolour paints, Frank's watercolour palette and five sheets of top quality artist's paper. There is also an instructional booklet and DVD, all packaged in a beautiful presentation box, the ideal present for a friend or for yourself. To order, call the telephone number on screen for your area. Slow on a lot to you, my friends, on till we meet again somewhere. Send a card or two, I'll be thinking of you, and I'll be hoping we'll be back real soon. But on till then, let me say, my friends, the pleasure was all the way. And if hearts in your mind are not hard to find, sure we can do it again one day. I simply painting with Frank today.